Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. I gave a talk recently, a chat. Actually, it was like yesterday. For those of you who are listening consecutively, but if this is 50 years later, don't worry about it. Um, but it was called something like um, how the record industry destroyed the value of classical music or made classical music worthless or something like that. It's actually in front of me, but I'm not reading it. I want to make something clear about that talk because there has been a huge discussion afterwards about the virtues of streaming versus physical product and my nostalgia for the decline of physical product. And I just want to make a point here for clarification purposes. I don't care how anybody gets their music as long as they get their music. That is all that matters to me. Each type of sound delivery medium has its own advantages and disadvantages. Physical product had a certain advantage as a product. I'm speaking purely in terms of business as a product, as in something to collect, something to hold and pet, something that contains more than merely the music, sometimes very intelligent notes. I have learned so much reading well-written liner notes over the years. I mean, it's, it's wonderful to have that resource. And it's something which unfortunately is going away with streaming services. On the other hand, with streaming services, you pay your however many bucks a month, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, it's de minimis, and you can get anything you want, which is amazing, which is fabulous. You can just root around and find whatever stuff you want, and it's all out there. I mean, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, there are also issues with being able to stream things directly and how you hook your system up, how you hook your computer up, how you, what you, you connect to your stereo and what your listening room is like and what your equipment is like and all of these sort of technical issues, but they're all resolvable. And so I don't care. <laughs> I really, really don't care. And this is my personal view. What matters is that everybody should be able to get the kind of music they want, when they want it, however they want it. I've been very lucky in my life. I was a critic for years and years and years where they were giving away free stuff. They don't so much anymore. Now I mostly buy it. Fortunately, having passed 60 years old, I have the wherewithal to acquire the stuff that I want to listen to and talk to you about it if that's what it involves. I'm perfectly happy doing that. But it... it doesn't make any difference how you get your music. I, I just think we should all agree on that. It's, it's nobody should feel guilty for sitting on piles of CDs like I do, like Fafner guarding his hoard, or people who subscribe to scre streaming services and get them that way. One is not better than the other. But I do have certain strong opinions about the business end of things. I mean, you know, I studied marketing at Stanford Business School. I have some business conceptions. I've been in and around the business for such a long time. I've seen brick and mortar stores disappear. <laughs> I've seen distribution channels change. I spent over a decade at the Medem convention in France dealing with all of the international distributors and the labels and hearing them bitch and moan and complain. And, you know, so I do have some pretty strong ideas about the business. And I've seen so much foolishness and nonsense on the part of the record labels and the people who are charged professionally with trying to sell classical music. I think classical music is horribly marketed horribly described and sold. I think that the the cultural afflatus, as I keep calling it, that that surrounds classical music has damaged it almost irreparably in, in how it's perceived and how it's used and how it's consumed and the likelihood that people will approach it with, with I think, the right frame of mind to simply treat it as a normal part of your daily life that you can enjoy whenever you want. Sure, there's an educational process involved, but you know, there shouldn't be an attitude, I mean, about getting the music that you want to get. So, you know, I, and, and there's a question of what I, I call in the business honesty. That is, what is it that you're selling and, and what is the relationship of what you're selling to the people who are consuming it and how should they feel about it? because nine times out of 10 classical music is sold like cod liver oil. You know, you have to sugar the pill. 
it's good for you, it's cultural, it's this, it's that. It's all of those things. It's all of those things. But that fundamentally is not what it is. What it is is musical entertainment. And people have to choose one form of musical entertainment over all the other forms of musical entertainment. And if you're going to make that choice, first you have to describe accurately what it is they're getting and why they should choose this kind and not that kind. And the answer is not because it's good for your baby. I, I am sorry, that's not going to create the new audience for classical music in the universe. So I'm gonna close with a little story, a little story, a true story about my own, my own experience with this thing. When, when I was doing Earquake, remember Earquake? That's the disc that I played in and, and helped to produce on the Ondine label, the world's loudest classical music label. My, my colleague, Dr. Zerlin Meyer Eller in Munich, and I, who put this collection together, wanted to do something that would be the, the classical music equivalent of, you know, head-banging, crazy, hard rock noise. Just enjoyable junk, something that was fun, something that had no other reason for existing other than to just blow your brains out and prove that classical music could be as loud and obnoxious and annoying as any other kind of music out there. That was the concept. We thought it was just a fun project and the label agreed, everybody agreed. But this being the classical music business, you had to somehow sell and promote it and and the label had a certain publicist who's who shall remain nameless. And that publicist was supposed to do work in, in promoting Earquake when it came out and do it the way we had discussed it. That is as a, a, a truly, you know, sort of noisy, fun project. Well, that publicist was doing other things. And one of the things he was doing was representing a major music festival. And that major music festival had as its theme, classical, the health benefits of classical music for that season. The health benefits. Yeah, right. The health benefits. Okay. And so he thought it would be wonderful because he was basically just trying to grab the bucks. I'm serious. It had nothing to do with professional anything. It would be a wonderful idea to combine the earthquake project with the festival's health benefits theory somehow and market them as the health benefits of classical music. And I got into a war with this schmuck. I said to him, listen, what health benefits? What the hell are you talking about? We're talking about just the opposite. We want to make something that's junk food. We want to make something that's bad for you. We want to sell it on that basis. We want it to be the, the you know, the Doritos of classical music. I don't know, something like that. You know, anything that will get across the idea of just, you know, the, the, the mindless, noisy fun of the whole project. It was one of the most disheartening experiences of my life. But I learned just how difficult it is to break classical music out of that, out of that ghetto, that, that awful, you know, you, you, can't, you can't describe it for what it is. You can't be honest about it. You have to try and persuade people or shame them into listening to it. I think that's a terrible thing because this is something that gives me such joy and I know it gives you such joy too. And we should be able to share the joy and we should be able to talk about it normally and honestly without having an attitude, without saying that you're better than the rest of the human race because of your musical taste. I mean, it's, it's, it's so irritating. And the, and the classical music industry has such a complex. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is that, is that it doesn't matter how you listen to it as long as you listen to it. And that is my final word. <laughs> so thank you all for joining me. Keep on listening and take care.